Hello, and welcome to the tutorial video on Google's Gmail. In this video, you will find out the basic features of Gmail and how you can use it in the school setting. Each student and teacher has their own Gmail account that is synced to their school-issued Google account. In this video, we will navigate you through the basic yet important features of Gmail. We will show you how to compose an email to your teacher or one of your classmates. You will also learn how to add a Google document and an image to that email. Lastly, we will take a look at how you can organize your Gmail inbox so that you can manage all of the emails that you will receive throughout the school year. Let's get started. As you can see, this is the main screen for Gmail. In the top right corner, you will see your profile picture that is synced with your Unit 5 Google account. Be sure that this reflects your Google account and possibly not one of your classmates in case you loaned your Chromebook to them. If by chance it is not your Unit 5 account, you will click on the logo and then select your account. If you do not like the layout of how your Gmail account looks, you can toggle between views by clicking here. Let's take a look at Gmail's main menu. At the top left corner, you will see three horizontal lines. This is the Gmail's main menu button. By clicking on this, you can toggle the main sidebar so that it is a permanent view or collapsible. Select which preference you like. Just below the main menu button is the list of features from the main menu. The first feature is the Compose button. By clicking on this button, you will be able to start composing an email. A great feature about Gmail is that you do not need to know what your teacher or classmate's email addresses are. In order to send them an email, you simply need to type their name in the To section. Their account will automatically pop up and you can select them. Let's say my math teacher's name is Mr. Sarver. If I just type in his name, his Gmail account will pop up. Be sure to include a subject to your email. The subject is a general overview of what your email is going to be about. Let's say you have a question about a math assignment that Mr. Sarver assigned earlier in that day. Your subject line could be math assignment question. Be sure to include a subject to your email. The subject is a general overview of what your email is about. Let's say you have a question about a math assignment that Mr. Sarver assigned earlier in the day. Your subject could be math assignment question. Just below the subject line is where you compose your email. Be sure to start your email with a proper greeting. Towards the bottom are some composing features that you will more than likely use. The first one is the drop-down box for changing the size of the text. Simply click on the box and decide on which text you want to use. Next to that is the drop-down box for changing the type of font. Click on the drop-down and select which font you would like to use. You can also make the text bold by clicking here. Italicize it. Underline it. And for you creative students, you can change the text color. Be sure to pick a color that your teacher is able to read. Next, we're going to show you how to add a Google Doc to your message. In our composition, we're asking Mr. Sarver if he can take a look at some work that we did from his class. This work is done on a Google Doc. In order for us to add it to this Gmail, we will need to go down to the bottom and insert file using Drive. Once we click on the button, another window will appear. You'll notice that at the top it says, My Drive, Shared With Me, Recent, Upload. I'm going to go to the Math folder. I click on the Math folder and I select the document that I need to show Mr. Sarver. I select it and click on Insert. You'll notice that the Google Doc now is inserted here. One more feature to consider is to insert a picture in your message. You can insert a photo by clicking here. When you click on Insert Photo, another window will appear. You can select Photos, Albums, Upload, or you can find a picture from the web address. Again, select the image that you want, insert it, and it will appear 
And once you have your message composed and ready to send, you will need to click on the Send button. To verify that the message was sent, go over to the Sent feature on the main menu. Here, once you click on Sent, you will see that the email was then sent underneath the Compose button you will see several other features. The first one is the inbox. The inbox is where all emails that are addressed to you are sent. This includes emails from your teachers, classmates, and notifications of assignments from Google Classroom. Notice the number one, just to the right. This number indicates that I have one unread message. The email that is bolded shows that I have not opened this email. Notice the email below that. It is not bolded. This means that I've already opened this email. Gmail star system. This feature allows you to mark your most important emails so you can easily find them later. By default, starred messages are labeled with a yellow star. If I select this email with a star, I can go over to the starred section, click on it, and you'll see that that email shows up under starred. The important feature allows you to mark emails that you feel are important. For example, you can see that I received this email notification from Mr. Hofferman about a study guide that was assigned to me. If I click on the email, then mark it as important, it will put the email in my important box. That when I click on important, this email will, be, will show up in this section. The drafts feature allows me to start composing an email, and then if I didn't finish typing it, I can go back to the drafts and easily find it so that I complete it and send it off. What's great is that it automatically saves my drafts for me. The last feature we will go over is adding a label to an email. This can be very helpful when organizing yourself. Over the span of the school year, you will receive quite a few important emails from a variety of teachers. In order to keep these in order, I recommend you add a label. Let's take a look at the unread message I have in my inbox. This message is from my social studies teacher via Google Classroom. My teacher has assigned us an ancient China study guide. This is very important that I complete it. I want to make sure that I can easily retrieve this email so that I can get the work. So I'm going to label this email for social studies. I go up to the top and I go to my label symbol. I click on labels and since I have not created a social studies label, I'm going to go to create new. I'm going to go ahead and identify this as social studies. You'll notice that I have two gray boxes. This signifies that this email can be found in inbox, but it can also be found in my social studies label. If I go over to the left hand side under categories, you'll see that I have my social studies label. You can create labels for each subject that you're being taught. That covers the basic features of Gmail. You'll be using Gmail quite a bit this school year, so it's very important that you familiarize yourself with them. Have a great year.